Hello Internet, Seth Skorkowski, and on my channel I've talked about a lot of different Lovecraftian games, especially Call of Cthulhu. I've done dozens of scenario reviews, I've done a big how-to series on just how to play it, or I've talked about different accessory books in the case of the Grand Grimoire of Cthulhu Mythos Magic. And today I'm going to be doing something along those lines, but also different than my normal thing, because I'm going to be taking a look at two very similar, but also very different accessory books that work not only well for Call of Cthulhu, but for any role-playing game that uses the Lovecraftian mythos. And they are The S. Peterson's Field Guide to Lovecraftian Horrors, written by Sandy Peterson and originally published in 1988 and 89 as two volumes, one for normal monsters and the other for creatures of the dreamlands. In 2016, the volumes were revised, compiled, and given new art and released as a single volume for Call of Cthulhu's 7th edition line. The other book is the Anatomical Guide to Lovecraftian Horrors, written and illustrated by Luis Merlo and published in 2021 by Peterson Games. Now, for the sake of full disclosure, I was given this copy of the book by Peterson Games in exchange for a fair and honest review. Okay, so what makes these two books special, other than being slender little hardbacks like this, is that the both of them cover in detail the most common creatures that you'll find in Lovecraft's Cthulhu Mythos. But unlike a monster manual, there are no in-game statistics for them. No hit points, no armor rating, number of attacks, or anything at all related to game mechanics. They're simply guides to the monsters themselves. Uh, their traits, their distinguishing characteristics, habitats, ecology, physical scale, or other information such as detailing how their locomotion works. And because these guides don't contain any reference at all to game rules or system mechanics, that makes them system neutral, which means that they're useful for any game that uses the Lovecraftian mythos, uh, whether that be Dungeons & Dragons, or Pathfinder, Delta Green, or Call of Cthulhu, these books are going to be equally useful. Well, not 100% equal, you do get a teeny tiny advantage if you're going to be using them in a modern Earth setting, and that has to do with both books that uh, cite fictitious sources or report fictitious sightings. No big deal, but there is a slight advantage if you're going to be using these in a modern setting. However, as similar as these two books are, these two books do have a few differences and advantages between one another. I think they're both great, but for different reasons. First, the details. The Peterson's Field Guide is 128 pages. It lays out 53 creatures, including several mythos gods, such as Azathoth, Ithaqua, and Yarlathotep. Each creature is given a color two-page spread with text on the left half of the page with a large image and other details on the right page. The Anatomical Guide is 108 pages and 32 creatures, none of which being mythos gods. Each creature is given an average of three pages of information. Most get three, but a few of them get four. So while we have less creatures, we get a lot more about each one of those creatures. For example, the Biaya Key. In Peterson's Field Guide, we get this, two pages, but the text is mostly reserved to being on one of them. The Anatomical Guide gives us three pages, and all of them packed with information. Another example, Deep Ones, a personal favorite of mine. Peterson's Field Guide gives us two pages that detail them, as well as Deep One hybrids and their transformation process up in the top of the right-hand page there. The Anatomical Guide gives us three pages just on Deep Ones themselves, detailing skeletal systems and how their claws work, and then gives us three more pages just about the hybrids and detailing the transformation and how those claws form. That's six pages versus two, which is a significant difference. So while the Peterson's Field Guide certainly has more creatures inside of it, the Anatomical Guide gives us a lot more about the ones that it has. Here's a list of the monsters for each book, as well as highlighting the creatures that they both share. Next is art. Both books are packed with art. The Peterson's Field Guide art is simply beautiful. I love it. I absolutely love it. It is some of my favorite art in any RPG book. In fact, the reason that I first picked up 7th edition Call of Cthulhu is because Chaosium was sending out in their newsletter different pictures that they were going to be having in this upcoming release, and it included some of the pictures that were in the Field Guide, and those were the pictures that really drew my interest and made me fall in love with it and made me pick up the game in the first place 
place at all. However, as much as I do love the art in this book, I do have a couple complaints, because the images aren't always perfectly accurate to the monsters that they're supposed to be about. For example, once again, Deep Ones. Love the picture, but this creature is really streamlined. It's not exactly the flabby fish frog creature that Lovecraft had described. Or this ghoul. Great picture, but that's not the dog-like ghoul that Lovecraft described to us. It looks like an undead monster with a prosthetic leg made out of rusted bolts and splintered wood. In the anatomical guide, the art is much cruder. It's black and white, or black and tan to be more precise. More like sketches that an observer would make of these creatures, either in the field or on a dissection table. It is, after all, an anatomical guide giving special attention to bone and organ structure. The ghouls look properly dog-like here. We also get these neat images of how their skulls and musculature are laid out. They're cool, but how do I use them? Well, some might find it strange to have an RPG book that doesn't have any RPG rules or references in it at all. These books are pretty useful. In addition to the most obvious aspect being that you get to learn the different details about these monsters. That way you can uh, write them into games a lot better or have a cool way of describing them because you know a lot more information about their habitats or how they move or different things like that. I find these books wonderful for in-game research. Not for the game master, but for the player characters. You find several strange footprints along the trail, but they're not like normal animal prints. They're almost like insects or like giant crabs. I'd like to roll a Cthulhu mythos, see if I can identify what made them. I'm going to check and see if the Book of Nameless Cults has anything on this. Okay, make your rolls. Roll a success. And I got a hard success. Okay, then this is what you discover. And you discover this. Aw, oh, damn, it's the fungi from you, Goth. Yeah, this is bad. What have you got on them? For my games, this is how I use these books, or more how I've used the Peterson's Field Guide before. I just haven't had a chance to use it yet this way with the anatomical guide yet, but I'm going to be using it that way. Because these books give details about the creatures without interrupting this with any sort of uh, in-system game rules or anything like that, it becomes a cool way to impart information to the players and to the player characters as the way that the player characters might be encountering it. It's not just me sitting behind the screen saying like, oh, well, you know, they look like this and they act like this and here's a couple little tidbits about them. It's me handing them this book and they get to look that information up themselves. And it's not like me handing them a monster manual where now the player is, uh, either can see clearly or is trying to avoid certain metagame knowledge, you know, such as, you know, its hit points or number of attacks or anything like that. This is just purely the information about this monster as if this monster was real and therefore how the player character would be researching this monster without any sort of game rules surrounding that. Now, when using these books as sort of in-game artifacts like this, one small thing to be aware of is that both books are written for a modern-day uh, sort of setting, or at least an Earth setting. Such as Peterson's Field Guide under the Hounds of Tindledos, it refers to sources from 1987, 83, and 82. So if you're playing a game that's set in the 1920s, you might have to hand wave past that. Oh, well, that's a typo. It meant to say 1887. Meanwhile, the anatomical guide has no dates inside of it that I've been able to found, so it is going to be a lot easier to fit into any time period, but it is still clearly based on Earth because there are some uh, creature locations that they're most commonly found at, such as this Gaia Yothan is most often found in Central and North America. So if your game is going to be set you know, way back, such as Cthulhu Dark Ages or Cthulhu Invictus, or is in some sort of fantasy setting like Dungeons and Dragons, where it's not going to be on Earth at all, you might have to hand wave past those anachronisms as well. I don't see these dates or locations to be any sort of big deal that's going to break your campaign if the players look down and they see that. Uh, you know, We'll just get a chuckle out of it, then move on and focus on the important information that it's actually trying to impart. But I figured at least mention that, that way nobody gets surprised when they read it because you know there is a little bit of reference to Earth in at least the modern day. Another way to use these books is by using the art. So let's 
say your player characters are about to encounter an elder thing in whatever game it is that you're playing, so they might encounter some notes that a previous victim or the villain might have written down. So you can pass out these images from the anatomical guide as handouts that the players get to look at, because these look like notes or sketches that some character made from their observations of these creatures or these research about these creatures, so the investigators have a good idea of what this monster looks like and a little bit of an idea of what to expect, and it can serve as a kind of a cool in-game artifact the players get to hold. But then, once they actually do encounter the creature, I'd pull out the picture from the Peterson's Field Guide and say this is what you see before you, showing the detailed and colored art for that. Also, since Lovecraftian creatures are supposed to be a little bit strange and unknowable, if you are going to be using both books in order to use these as handouts to give to your players, and some of the information doesn't quite line up between them, kind of like those uh, images of the ghouls or the deep ones that I pointed out earlier, or if you're just going to be using one of these two books, but you don't want to follow exactly what it has to say, you know, 100%, right? You have a little bit that you want to change yourself. Uh, that's still perfectly fine, because even in Lovecraft's universe, there is going to be discrepancies. Uh, so you can say that the books that the player characters are reading, maybe those are written by madmen, or maybe they're uh, giving second or third hand accounts. The person that wrote this book that the PC is using for research, they never actually experienced one of these monsters themselves. They just uh, compiled some notes from people that had met them that they had met in insane asylums or something like that. So the player characters can use these and they can glean a lot of really useful information that might be able to help them out, uh, but it might also be discovered that it wasn't 100% accurate to the monster that they're about to face. So this leads to the big question, which one should I get? Well, that depends. Both of these books are great, but if you can't get both of these books, when you have to choose between which one to get, it really comes down to whichever one you'd prefer. The Peterson's Field Guide you can pick up from the Chaosium website, PDF included, for $34 or you can just pick up the PDF by itself for $17. Now one great thing with this book is if you picked up the Call of Cthulhu slipcase set that's got the Keeper Guide and the Investigator's Handbook as uh, well as a Game Master screen and a module that's all tucked inside and it all fits very nicely into this box right here. But once you take out the Game Master screen and the module it leaves this little gap right here and the Peterson's Field Guide fits perfectly inside that gap. You know, just nice and neat in there. And I've gotten a lot of questions when people have watched my videos and they've seen this on the shelf behind me and they've kind of asked like, what's that little white stripe that's going inside your box set? Because I don't have that inside my slipcase cover. Nope, that's just the Peterson's Field Guide. It just fits nice and smooth in there like it was made for it. I kind of like to think that Chaosium did that intentionally because this looks really, really nice. Okay, so that book is $34. Meanwhile, the anatomical guide can be found at the Peterson Games website, also including the PDF for $39, slightly more, or you can pick up just the PDF for $10, which is less than the Peterson's Field Guide PDF is. Sadly, this one doesn't fit into the slipcase, though. The Peterson's Field Guide gives us more monsters. The Anatomical Guide has less. They are the most common monsters that you're going to find in Lovecraft's Mythos, but it does come with more information about those monsters, which I think is a pretty big plus. Art-wise, when it comes to quality, Peterson's Field Guide wins. It's not even a fair comparison, because I like this art more than just about any other book that's out there, though I really do like the dissection images and handout potential that the Anatomical Guide gives us. In the end, it really comes down to whichever one you prefer. I don't think you would be disappointed with either one of these books. I think they're both fun, especially as using as ways that you can give sort of, you know, in-character information to use these books as artifacts or handouts. And for that, I think both of these books are absolutely wonderful. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see some more of our stuff, such as game reviews or how-tos, just hit that subscribe button. Till next time, amigos, y'all have a great day. You know, what I think would be pretty cool is if you did something for this, kind of like the old Monstrous Compendium was for AD&D's second edition. Like a big three ring binder that you could get and add new pages to it, sort of tailor your own mythos tone with different expansions, or maybe even add your own stuff to it. That'd be pretty sweet.